Hello everybody and welcome back again to Assassin's Creed 2. So, in the previous episode, before my little Christmas break, we finished our first assassination. We killed the guy who is responsible for the execution of Giovanni and uh, Ezio's brothers. But, I mean, that can't be the end of it because the game is just beginning. As a matter of fact, when editing the previous episodes, I noticed the weird shady guy that we saw in the house behind Alberti when we delivered the documents. He was also at the execution and he was the one ordering Alberti to arrest Ezio. I didn't actually notice that when I was playing um, the scene, but I noticed it when I edited it. So I'm going to assume that he's the one giving the orders and he is somehow involved in this. As a matter of fact, if I remember correctly, Alberti didn't really have like a grudge against Giovanni as such. He had some issues with the Medici. So he went to the Templars for help and I guess the Templars told him that he had to betray Giovanni for some reason and so he did. So basically we only killed Alberti now and we still need to find out who is actually responsible for it, right? Anyway, um, I am somewhere over here now and I have to go back to, I guess, Paola um, for my next mission. However, we have a few new viewpoints in the area. So let's make a little detour and check out a few of them. Um, I mean, at some point I will probably start to edit my episodes a bit and, you know, cut out a bit of running around and stuff like that. Um, but for now the map is still pretty small, so it's not really that uh, long to get from A to B. And while stuff is still new, let's explore this place together a little bit. Oh no, don't, don't fall down here. I want you to climb up on this tower over here. Can you please do that for me? Yes. So yeah, as I was about to say, at some point I will start to edit um, some stuff a little bit. But as always, I will never, you know, edit out stuff that is like new or interesting or whatever. Just the repetitive stuff. And I mean, if we really have like over 70 viewpoints, you probably won't need to see all of them, right? Anyway, we have another viewpoint um, not that far away, I guess. Yeah, let's grab this one too and then we will go back to Paola. And yeah, let's try to avoid the guards because I'm still notorious and they don't react well to my presence. So can I just climb up here? Okay. Ah, I see. Apparently it's the one over here, right? Um, okay, how how do I get up here? Apparently Ezio does not want to climb this side, but he is climbing this side. Alright. And there we go. One more viewpoint. And down we go. I haven't missed any codex entries on my way here. Well, we have one here, apparently. Caravan travel. You should be able to buy a caravan ride to another city. Oh, really? Well, I'm not really interested in going to another city. Not yet, anyway. Travel in the Renaissance was not the disgusting ordeal it is today. <laughs> Instead, it was merely terrifying. Okay. The countryside was filled with bandits, causing most travelers to move in armed groups called caravans. Anxious voyagers usually sewed valuables and gold into the soles of their shoes or the lining of their jackets. 
Guides called Vettorini were sometimes hired to help plot the route of the caravans and book rooms at local inns, but those carriers were often working with the bandits, just like the travel agents today. <laughs> um, is, this, is this Sean who has such a dim view of travel and travel agents? <laughs> Probably. It sounds like Sean. Alright, well thank you for that info. Oh, I see. Yeah, I, I can't seem to be doing anything here and I'm not sure if I want to leave the city at the moment. Monterigioni, Forli, San Gim Gimignano? Gimignano. I can't properly pronounce that. But anyway, let's let's uh, go back to our main quest. Um, oh, we have... Yeah, right, we have these codex pages. I still haven't fully figured out what to do with these. I mean, I guess I have to collect them and bring them to Leonardo, but... Um, how do I get them? That is the question. Let me have a look at this. Oh, there are guards. Um, let's avoid those. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, we have more guards. Oh, uh, and one is actually on the roof. So, we have guards that are guarding like a bank, right? And the codex page is inside. <coughs> hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if I want to deal with that at the moment. Yeah, don't, don't, don't care about me. I'm, I'm moving on. I will come back for those codex pages later, I suppose. And for the time being, I will just um, go back to my main mission. Okay, let's see, where do I need to go? It's actually right over here. Okay, I guess I can take the rope over here. And yeah, this is actually where I need to go. Um Oh, but this is not the proper proper door that I have to take. I think it's best I leave Firenze. Where will you go? My uncle Mario owns a villa near Monterigioni. You're still a wanted man, Ezio. What would you have me do then? I've seen posters all across the district. Tearing them down will help the city forget your face. <laughs> no doubt the Herald's also inside the public. Bribe them, and they'll speak of other things. Or you could hunt those who bear false witness against you. They traded dignity for coin. Their loss would not be mourned. Do any of these things, and you should be free to leave. Okay. Reduce your notoriety by removing posters bribing a herald or killing a corrupt official. Alright. Yeah, let's do that. Um, how would I best do that? Oh, I see. A poster. An official. And that's a herald. Well, we have a few posters nearby, so maybe this little meter will help that. you know how far you are between notorious and incognito. 
Uh, thanks, Rebecca. This will help you know if you should watch your actions. It'll also tell you if the notoriety level is part of Ezio's memory or not. Okay. Um... It's supposed to be somewhere over here. Can I, like, see it with my eagle? Oh, that must be it. Alright. I'll take that poster. I think I remember this from the first game, but I'm not sure if it was the same mechanic. Okay, so this reduces my notoriety about 25%. Alright. Anyway, um... I see more posters in the vicinity. That seems like the easiest way to do this. Oh, it's actually over here. This is a very weird place to place one of these posters. I mean, who is going to see them over here? <laughs> but okay. Makes it easier for me to remove them. And... There's supposed to be another one. here. Um, but apparently it is not on my level. It's somewhere higher. Oh, there we go. Alright, uh, one more poster should do the trick. Of course, we do have, like, a herald over here, or what is it? Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't even proclaim my worst enemy's obituary for so few <laughs> florins. <laughs> oh, that's actually expensive. Okay, I can't afford that. But uh, hang on a second. I think there was another Do not database entry. Um, can I? Look it up in my database. Yeah, this one. Ospedale degli Innocenti. One of those strange glyphs Sean mentioned is on this landmark. You should go find it. Okay, I will. Designed by Filippo Brunelleschi. That guy again. He seems to be designing a lot of stuff in here. And opened in 1445, the Ospedale degli Innocenti, Hospital of the Innocents, was an orphanage for unwanted babies. Apparently the Florentines were a feisty bunch since it was the first of its kind in Europe. Babies were typically abandoned in a basin in the front, although later transactions were facilitated by the introduction of a rotating horizontal wheel which moved infants into the building without the parents being seen. Some parents weren't just ejecting their loved child, they were making money of them. Many mother abandoned her baby in order to be hired by the hospital as a wet nurse so she could be paid to feed her own child. <laughs> That's interesting. Boys were tutored in various professions by the hospital staff while girls were usually trained to become nuns or wives. Okay. Well, I guess it's better than just, I don't know, abandoning the children somewhere else. Okay, um, apparently we have another symbol somewhere on this building. This has so let's have a look. I mean, he it's die. all of this place? Or is it like this building over here? Friends, be warned. He kills for sport. There is no <laughs> Are you talking about spring? me? Next that is you. totally, totally your wrong. Father, I don't kill for sport. <laughs> Yeah, I still need to find um, one more poster. Actually, we have one, like, over here. Um, or maybe on the other side. And while I'm looking for the poster, I guess I can try to look for that symbol too. 
All right, there we go. I am anonymous again, right? So the guards should be less twitchy in my presence. But um, I still want to find that symbol. So let's climb on top of this building and let's look around a bit. Oh, hang on a second. That looks suspicious over here. And that is an Egyptian sign. What is that doing here? Power doesn't die. It's passed on. Okay, descendants, unlock the file. Let's do it. He carried it with him. Find his inheritance. Franklin Delano Roosevelt Strategic Meeting, 1944. Okay. Infrared. Oh. That is, that is the Apple of Eden, right? I see. Piece of Eden number three. Um, do I just have to look for... Ah, I see, another one. Well, this is pretty easy. And Gandhi during the Salt March. And there we go, another piece of Eden. Yep, that was pretty easy. So, we got another piece of the video, but again, it doesn't really tell me much at the moment. I just see like two people running and that's about it. But we found another one. So, good work. Um, but now we can go back and talk to her again. Then again, this viewpoint is very close by. So let's check that out before we go back again. It's probably the one over here. Um, I probably can't make this jump. Nope, I can't. I guess I should have expected that. All right, um, where can I climb up? Okay. This should work and it seems like it's getting night. Yeah, that's the moon over there. So there's definitely a day-night cycle here. Interesting. Alright, another part of our map, so let's go back to Paola and, and let's see what she has planned for me now. And yeah, the guards they actually seem to ignore me now. I mean, I can walk past them without them getting angry. Bentornato, Ezio. Were you successful? Yes. Madre? Ah, Ezio, there are. where have you been? They wouldn't let us leave, and Mother, oh, she hasn't spoken a single word since we left the house. Father will need to sort things out. Um, where is Father? Yeah, and Federico about that. and Bertuccio. Hmm? Something's happened. They don't what know do you yet. Mean? No, it's impossible. Claudia. No, 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 no. I did everything I could, Piccina. <laughs> Listen, right now what matters is getting us all someplace safe. 
But to do that, I need you to stay focused. Do you understand? Good. Will you watch over Mother for me? Then we are ready. Thank you again. For everything. Stay safe, Edzo. Stay vigilant. I suspect the road ahead is yet long. Okay, so what are we going to do? Escort Maria and Claudia out of Florence to the Villa Auditore in Monterigioni. Okay, so we're leaving the city. Fair enough. Seguini. Oh, and I have to get them out of here. Um, sure. Follow me. Inconspicuously. I mean, the guards, they don't seem to mind me at the moment. What do you want? <laughs> Leave me alone. You are a very bad singer. Just saying. <laughs> yes, we are moving along. Don't worry about us. There's another one. What are you doing? Leave me be! All who dare to cross his path, he weeps oh. in the poor retreat. Press, oh god, what kind of... Ah, okay. And I can select money. The shadows are and I can... What? Gold! Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. I hear money. Um, can they run? Yes, I can run. Come, friends! I've fresh caught leeches today! Okay, so that's where we need to go. Oh, it's just a checkpoint, alright. Okay, let's hurry up a little bit. All these guards make me nervous. Oh, look at all these bars. <laughs> oh, that's actually distracting the guards too. Okay, press... Um, I think that's F. To lock onto an enemy, then press E to have the curtains distract them. Ah, okay. Um, so how do I hire them? Okay, it's E. And now I can lock onto, well, I guess one of them. And use After E you. to... Ah, okay. <laughs> and now we can just sneak past all the guards. Yes, we can. All right. Nice. So we made it out of the city. How could this have happened to us? I don't know. <laughs> yes. I think it's a conspiracy. Will we ever be back? I don't know. <laughs> right, Monterigioni, that's where we need to go. All right, what this will way. happen to our house? I don't know. <laughs> were they... Were they given a proper burial? Yes. They were. Really? Well, that's at least something. Okay, arrivederci. Sequence 2 complete. Toscana. Okay, so we're at a different place now. We 
We should be close. Grazie a Dio. Okay. Escort Maria and Claudia to the Villa Auditore in Monte Regioni. Queen. Right. Let's do it. So, how far do I have to go? Okay, it's somewhere over here. Let's run a little bit. I hope you can keep up. Oh, um, that's not looking good. Buongiorno, Ezio. How could you leave a Firenze without saying a proper goodbye? Ezio! What do you want, Vieri? So many things. A larger palazzo, <laughs> two new steeds, a prettier bride. Oh, and yes, your life. I can do for the loss of your father and brothers. <laughs> um, hang on a second. I want. Oh, I don't have a sword. I only have my my blade at the moment. What happened to my sword? But apparently, I can I can fight with my uh, blade as well. All right. Oh, I didn't see that guy over here. You get away from my sister. <laughs> I grow tired of this game. Finish him and do not spare the women. Oh, what sorcery is this? <laughs> not sorcery, boy. Skill. Show yourself as you wish. <laughs> Here, use this. Kill them. Kill them all. Ah, there we go. Now I have a sword again. That's much better. And these guys are, well, some of them are like a one-shot kill. There we go. And let me take this guy down now. And one more over here. Okay. And that's the last one. There we go. You have my thanks. Keep the sword, Ezio. Do I know you from somewhere? <laughs> Don't you recognize me? It's a me, Mario. <laughs> Uncle Mario. <laughs> it's been too long, Hotel. <laughs> Far too long. I heard what happened in Firenze. Terrible. Come, let's get you all away from here. Okay, so you're my uncle, like Giovanni's brother, I guess? Um, yeah, sure, let's go and talk oh, oh. to him. Oh, hang on a second, we have another database entry. Monterigioni. Built in the 13th century by the overlords of Siena, Monterigioni was actively involved in the defense of Tuscany against Florentine attempts to gain more territory. At the front of this conflict was the Auditore family, who became the city's rulers and protectors. It was the Auditore who constructed Monterigioni's famous walls, which can still be seen today. Although standing in opposition to Florentine desires, the Auditore had cordial relations with the Medici family, largely due to their collective Florentine roots. Monterigioni successfully withstood at attacks from Florence until in 1554 the city was betrayed. Giovanni Zetti, the keeper of the garrison and the Florentine exile, was allowed to return to Florence in exchange for the keys to the city. Extraordinarily, the auditor were allowed to continue their rule of Monteregioni under Florentine leadership, showing that the Medici do not forget their friends. Okay, so some info on this place over here. Interesting. Explore the Villa Auditore with Mario. So, tell me everything. They executed father for treason. Federico and Petruccio too. And they came for me. Do you know why? I have no answers, uncle. 
Only a list of names taken from a man who wished me dead. I still can't believe they are gone. Don't worry. We will make sense of this. I wish I shared your optimism. Come on, keep pace. We're almost there. I think you will find much to like in Monterey Johnny. I thought Monterey Johnny was an enemy of Firenze. <sighs> For now. Next year it will be its friend, the year after its enemy again, and mm -hmm. on and on. I cannot keep track, so I have stopped trying. These are honest, hard-working people. Our shops may only carry simple goods, but they're well-made and dependable. There is a chapel here, too. De Prete seems a nice enough fellow, but I have never been much of a believer. <laughs> Did you know the Villa Auditore is almost 200 years old? It was built by my great-grandfather. A strange man who carried all kinds of secrets. Keep your eyes open, and you might discover a few of them yourself. Okay. With all the fighting that's been going on, this place has started to get a bit rough around the edges. I wish I could do something about it. But I just don't have the time or money to fix things up. Guess that's life, huh? Here we are. Casa Dolce Casa. So, what do you think? It's most it's impressive, nice. Uncle. nice. She's seen better days, I suppose. Believe oh, me, I'd that's have a barcode. Again, if only I had the time. Now that you have had the tour, Nipote, you should go and outfit yourself. My men in the market are expecting you. Return here when you're finished, and we'll begin. Begin? Begin what? I thought you'd come here to train. No, uncle. I came here to escape Firenze. And I intend to take my family further still. But what about your father? He'd want you to finish his work. What work? My father was a banker. Wait, he did not tell you? I have no idea what you're talking about. Makeme Kombini Giovanni. <sighs> Where to even begin? Go and fetch the gear in the market. It will give me time to think. But... But that's that. We'll talk more later. Some spending money should you need it. And if you find yourself in need of rest, I've prepared a room for you on the top floor of the villa. Okay, well, thank you. Visit the blacksmith. But yeah, apparently we can finally get a few answers here from this guy, our uncle. But <laughs> I want to have a look at this over here. Is this another symbol? Yeah, it is. I mean, you can actually see it with your bare eyes. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I got a few more entries in my database. Let me have a look at that. Villa Auditore. Okay, yeah, we have one of those glyphs. I've already seen it, um, but let's read the text too. Constructed in 1290, the Villa Auditore is an important medieval predecessor to early Renaissance architecture. The villa's wonderful symmetry and order geometry were a revelation for its time. Not only concerned with aesthetics, Domenico Auditore, Ezio Auditore's great-grandfather, designed his home to double as a fortress and training ground, looking out both over the city that it protects and the Tuscan plains. After a Florentine attack in 1320 left the facade damaged, the present facade was erected and a painting gallery was added to the interior. Domenico was more than just an architect and a warrior, he was also a skilled engineer. Recently discovered hidden compartments and rooms with mechanisms blocking entry are several unique features of the building that make it a technological marvel as well as an architectural one. Okay, so there's stuff for me to discover, I guess. Okay, and we have another codex entry about this guy, Mario Auditore. Date of birth, 1434, profession condottiero noble. One of several condottieri patrolling the Tuscan countryside, Mario Auditore played a significant role in the Battle of Anghiari, alerting Micheletto Attendolo to the appearance of several dust clouds over the road which signaled a surprise advance by Milanese troops. Thanks to Mario, the Milanese attack was foiled and the Florentines won the battle. Although Mario sided with Florence in Anghiari, for most of his career he defended the interests of his hometown Monteregioni, derailing Florentine attempts to seize Tuscan territory. 
While Mario's younger brother Giovanni moved to Florence in 1454 to pursue a career in banking, Mario styled, stayed at the family's villa in Monteregioni, stating in a letter to Giovanni that he preferred fighting like a man to filing out balance sheets. Okay, yeah, he certainly looks more like a warrior than a banker. <laughs> Alright, so we learned a bit about this place and the owner and now let's um, have a look at the symbol over here. Can I read it from here? Okay, apparently it's that It's getting worked. easier and easier to hack into Abstergo's mainframe. It's like I know what data I'm looking for. I've already lived it. Infinite knowledge. Its open mouth delivers a kiss of death. Okay. Burning Viet Cong base camp, Mai To, Vietnam. Its open mouth delivers a kiss of death. Oh, I see. There's stuff in there. Leading the young to their end. Members of the 2nd Infantry Division advance under machine gun fire into the outskirts of Brest, France. Okay. Oh, hang on a second. Ah, I see. There's something weird over here. The flames from its throat poke out their eyes. Union troops in formation, Beaufort, South Carolina. The flames from its throat. I mean, it could be one of these weapons, but there are a lot of them, so... Oh, yeah, there's something over here. This monster did not come from man. The first pictorial representation of a gun. What? Where? <laughs> Are you talking about this? Are you sure this is a gun? No, this is not a gun. Um... I'm not sure where the gun is supposed to be. Oh, what the hell? There's like a code over here. But B minus two, what does this mean? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense at all. This monster did not come from man. Okay. This is very weird. I mean, there's definitely stuff in here that doesn't belong here, but apparently it's not what I'm what I'm looking for. But I'm not really seeing anything else in here that is weird or unusual. Yeah, this is a strange one. I mean, with all the others, you could usually apply some sort of logic. I'm not, I'm not seeing the logic in this one. There we go. Okay, found it. Little bit of trial and error, but we made it. Okay, yeah, that's four of them, but um, so far it's still not really enough to see what's going on. But anyway, we found another one. So let's get down again. Then again, um, apparently we have um, a viewpoint 
on top of this building, so maybe I will visit the viewpoint while I'm at it. Okay, it's over here. And yeah, we are in a completely new place. And it has like a very different atmosphere. I don't know, the color scheme is different. No, 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 S stay, stay on top of this, please. I need to synchronize. <laughs> that was weird. Okay, let's go down again. And... Yeah, we have a very small city over here. And this is where we have to go next and we need to collect some stuff, right? But um, I'm going to do that in the next episode. So, um, as usual, thank you for watching and see you again next time.